This summer, it's all about love, love, love. But you don't have to wear tie-dye or listen to Joan Baez to get in on this summer of love. Love is at the heart of who God is and who God made us to be. Love shows up in different ways at different times and places. In the support of friends through good times and bad. In sharing goods and gifts with our communities. In appreciating the present moment and in setting aside time for rest and worship. Jesus shows us what a life of love looks like. So come, find your groove, and feel the love with us this summer. Hello there, Indian Mills United Methodist Church family, friends, and guests. Welcome. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. Please take a moment to click the like icon or click the link for the check-in and let us know you're worshiping with us. Today, we are wrapping up our Summer of Love series and we'll be focusing on how we can demonstrate our love for God by setting time apart with God. You are already demonstrating your love for God by worshiping with us today. So let's get ready and discover more ways to show our love for God. Join me now in praying together today's opening prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray for those who need rest from the insecurities of the world. Help us as we worship and find spaces for guidance, renewal, and hope. We pray that our deserted places become less about feeling alone and isolated, but instead, Awaken the connection of an all-encompassing divine love and assurance. We pray all of this in your awesome name. Amen.
chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I've been busier than ever the past 17 months. I've somehow found time for myself because my body, mind or soul, told me I needed to sh stop, take a deep breath and pray to God for strength and discernment. I usually sense it as God's invitation to me to observe Sabbath time. 
Often I find myself refreshed and renewed by spending that time with God and better able to do my work afterwards. While that's helpful, I really believe a vacation or retreat for me is even more helpful. I must confess I feel a little envious when I see family, friends, and colleagues posting pictures on Facebook of trips to the Caribbean, Hawaii, Disney theme parks, cruises, or even short trips to Six Flags, Hershey or Dorney Park, the shore, the Philadelphia or Cape May zoos, or camping trips. Most people are smiling in those photos and they look refreshed and even younger. However, due to COVID-19, finances and schedules, it's pretty hard for us to make plans for getaways. So I rely on taking breaks from my task by taking time for prayer, physical exercise, calling mom, talking with Debbie or Greg, walking the dog or playing with the cat or going to our cottage in South Seaville. Shopping for Greg's birthday gift and taking him to dinner last week refocused me away from my work and gave me an opportunity to be refreshed and renewed once again. One of my family members seldom took vacations until recently. He stresses and worries about things like I do. But now, every summer, he and his friends spend an entire week on a spiritual retreat. He always returns happier, healthier, and he looks much more vibrant and younger. Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, God created Sabbath for our renewal and well-being, not to see if we would comply with God's rules. But the Sabbath had become a strict, rigid, and demanding practice by Jesus' time. Jewish people were forbidden from doing several hundred things on the Sabbath. Jesus confronts religious leaders many times throughout the Gospels regarding the Sabbath. For Jesus, the Sabbath was not meant to be a gloomy restriction, but a time of sharing, healing, love, and grace. I feel depressed when people say that besides church, Everything else should be closed on Sunday and people should stay home. You see, as a child, staying home with family on Sunday meant staying home with my dad and eating Sunday dinner together. Mom always cooked a good meal, but the menu wasn't always what kids enjoyed. My dad, who could be charming one moment and throw a temper tantrum the next, would often do the latter at the dinner table, creating much indigestion. So I hope you'll forgive me if I cringe when someone suggests we go back to the blue laws of the 1950s and 60s. And I pray that we will experience the Sabbath as it's truly meant to be experienced, to be for our joy and our well-being. Jesus invites us to Set apart Sabbath for quiet time, prayer, and fellowship, for a relationship with him, and for a better life, because God loves us. Nathan Stuckey writes in his book, Wrestling with the Rest, that in the Gospels, Jesus only spent one Sabbath day alone. The other Sabbath days he spent in many different kinds of groups. So fellowship with others focused on Jesus is a way of finding Sabbath rest and even healing, which is another of Jesus' favorite Sabbath activities. The healing services we offered on the last Sunday of each month prior to the pandemic required a community focused on Christ to pray over those seeking healing. Jesus also points to the Sabbath as a holy time, a time that helps us create space to honor God, a time set apart to build a loving relationship with God. In Luke chapter 4, verse 16, we read that Jesus had a custom 
of worshiping in the synagogues on the Sabbath. And at other times, he was recharged by spending time alone in prayer. And so we learn from Jesus that there are different ways to observe Sabbath at different times, according to our different needs. For instance, if your job requires you to work on Sunday morning, you can observe Sabbath on your day off. In Atlantic City, where many people have jobs that require weekend work, a church used to offer services on Wednesdays at 12 noon, followed by lunch. Wednesday was Sabbath day for them, and attendance was greater on Wednesdays than on Sunday mornings. The past 17 months, people have participated on our online worship services at different times during the week, many outside of Sunday morning. Each of us has the ability to take time apart to be with God. Making time for Sabbath is as important as scheduling other tasks in our lives. Pastors are encouraged by our bishops and district superintendents to intentionally schedule time in our calendars each day for Sabbath, just as we set appointments in our calendars for appointments with people. When we set aside time for family and friends, we demonstrate our love for them. So too, we demonstrate our love for God by intentionally setting aside quality Sabbath time. It doesn't have to be limited to one day or one piece or one activity or one place. The Mexico mission trip Debbie and I participated in a few years ago was hard work, but it was also a Sabbath experience. Some of our congregation participate in various mission activities that help others that may not be church related, but have qualities of Sabbath renewal, such as the MS Bikeathon or Breast Cancer or Light the Night Walks. Others have participated in church ministries such as the Crop Walk or the Super Bowl of Caring or preparing health kits for victims of disasters and other times, other events that can be times of Sabbath for us or participants as well. Sabbath may be fellowshipping over a meal with some members of the church family or spending time in a small Bible study, prayer or accountability group. We may need to let go of some things to make space and time to spend time with God. We demonstrate our love for God by setting aside time for Sabbath. So let's be in prayer about how we can regularly set aside time to rest and worship in Sabbath and demonstrate our love for God. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities we have to demonstrate our love for you by our Sabbath practices. Help us to see Sabbath as a gift from you for our health and wholeness and in our expression of love for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. When I pray, Lord, in your mercy, Please respond with a heartfelt, hear our prayer. Let us pray. O Sabbath maker God, remind us that keeping the Sabbath demonstrates our love for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remind all peoples and leaders of all nations that you created the Sabbath to benefit all people so we may better work for love, justice, peace, and the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to respect the Sabbath and the earth as your own creation, that we may demonstrate our love for you by more effectively caring for all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless us in our work, in our play, and in our Sabbath time, that we may love you and each other as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all who suffer 
and who need Sabbath rest, including those we lift up to you either silently in our hearts or aloud in our homes. We pray for the people of Afghanistan and all who are trying to seek refuge and trying to escape. We pray for those in our military who are helping them. Watch over them and protect them and bring them all to a safe place. We pray for the people of Haiti who have suffered through storms and through earthquake. And we pray that you would watch over them and protect them. We pray for the people in Tennessee affected by severe flooding, for those who have lost loved ones. We pray, Lord, for peace for them. We pray for the people in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast of the United States who are awaiting Hurricane Ida. We pray that you would help them to be removed from harm's way. Renew us in our Sabbaths to more effectively offer your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your love all who have died. Comfort their loved ones and bring us all to the joy of your salvation, where we will flourish forever, united in love for you and for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. United Methodist Church family, friends and guests. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. We pray that you have been inspired by our 
time together in our Summer of Love series. And we pray that our time together will be inspire you to demonstrate your love for God by setting aside more time for Sabbath. You can set apart time for Sabbath in many different ways. One way is by collecting money or collecting food for our food pantry or participating in a walk or bike-a-thon that raises funds for people in need, by forming a small fellowship group, or by worshiping with us online or in person 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. And now, here is a little preview of what's coming up next month in the month of September. If someone asks you, what is faith? What would you say? What about if someone asked, what does faith look like? Sometimes we want to put faith in a box, a Sunday morning church box. Or we think faith is about saying, thinking, and believing the right things. But there's so much more to faith than that. In the Bible, we see that faith is about being rooted in a relationship with God that changes the way we live and that has the power to change the world. John Wesley, who started the Methodist movement, sums up the faith in action in three principles. Three general rules. Oh, like stop, look, listen, or shake, rattle, and roll. No, brother. You know our general rules. Do no harm. Do good. Attend upon all the ordinances of God. Or as I like to say, practice showing up for God. As we trust in God's promises to transform us, let's awaken our faith together as we explore living faith. We hope you'll join us in September for a Living Faith series and hope you'll be joining us next week. And remember, God loves you. And so do we at the Indian Mills United Methodist Church.